I had to bring this up. I, I know many of you, and, and David, David is one of them, and uh, I'm not even mad at him. I know many of you just root for my sadness uh, as the Boston Celtics are probably on their way out of the playoffs as the worst number one seed in history. Um, without getting into my outright hatred of Danny Ainge, I, I, I want to just relate this locally and why you should care. Okay, one. You should root for the Celtics to get swept out of the playoffs. Not in five, not in six, and sure as hell not in seven. Swept out. Many of you are probably sitting there going, why? Why would you say that, Michael? Tell you why. Right now in Boston, it's pandemonium. You have people calling for Brad Stevens' job. Okay, Brad Stevens is one of the five best coaches in the NBA. It's not Brad Stevens' fault. This is Danny Ainge's fault. Hoarding his draft picks. Like, a, like Ernie the Can Man up on MSU's campus hoarding his bottles. Okay? This is ridiculous. But the point is, a sweep as the one seed, first round, embarrassment, shame, ring the bell. Listen to me. Celtics going to get freaky. And they might get freaky with you. Here's why you should care. The Celtics check every box on the Drummond wish list. Work with me. For one, Celtics are going to be desperate. Desperate. This will be the summer where Ainge consolidates assets, i.e. he'll finally move some. Didn't want to do it for Paul George. Jerk. The point is, desperate. Two, need size. Need a rim protector. Need a rebounder. They got a lot of shooting, but they need a big. They need a guy who can run the pick and roll with Isaiah. They need a guy who can rebound. They need a shot blocker. David's got a higher vertical than Al Horford. Okay, that's two. Three, they have the assets to acquire Drummond without it really hurting them. Four, and this is the big one, they're in phenomenal salary cap shape. A lot of guys on sweetheart deals. The Drummond deal would look better to them than a lot of other teams. Now, the next question would be, whoa, could we get Brooklyn's pick over my dead body? Okay, Andre Drummond's deal is atrocious. But would the Celtics be a team in position where they could deal you, let's say, one of the players they drafted last year in the first round who they stashed in Europe, plus their second first-round pick this year, and provide the salary relief getting Drummond off the books? freeing up the money for you to sign KCP without hitting the luxury tax? Yes. Yes, they could. Could the Celtics provide a player, a young player, on a good contract? Could the Celtics trade you a Marcus Smart or trade you an Avery Bradley? Yeah, they could. I'm making a point to you that if the Celtics get swept out of this thing, and probably if they lose in five, I think that becomes your huckleberry. And it just depends whether your owner is awake enough, as Sully would say, woke enough. My millennials, stay woke. If you're woke enough, I think that's where you could you could dump Drummond on somebody. And the truth of the matter is the Celtics are so desperate. I mean, look, they started Tyler Zeller. I mean, hey, Jay Crowder, Kelly Olynyk in his ponytail. I mean, come on. Now, I'm offering it to you because I know none of you are watching the playoffs. I know nobody cares. But even if you're just going to watch the box scores and you want to root for more than me to be Captain Poopy Pants, root for the Bulls to end the Celtics season in stunning fashion. It'll be a summer of nuclear bombs in Boston. I mean, nuclear trade. What do they call them? Woj bombs. That's what Adrian Wojnowski. Woj bombs all summer long in Boston. And it might be you're out from Andre Drummond. Now, I don't think I deserve a hot take sounder there, but I want to allow Sully and David to grade this out. Did anything I say not make sense? That's a no. hot take. I, that, that, hold on. Two four eight. because you said it. I had to. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. If anyone wants to call up and accuse me of a hot take, you can do it now, gentlemen. Do you buy what I'm selling? The hot take would be if you're saying they could get that number one overall pick, number two overall pick, whatever it is. Over my dead body. <laughs> No, I like the scenario. I'd love to get Andre Drummond out of town. I think that'd be great. And, well, yeah, if you get that, that 21st pick, or was it 21st or 
All right, what Correct. if you got what if you got the twenty first pick and then the the center the Celtics drafted Zizic, the kid everybody loves who went back to Europe. He can come over this year. You get Zizic in the twenty one. So twenty one, you're looking at a guy maybe if Justin Jackson falls or TJ Leaf, Luke Kennard, someone Mike, like that. Mike, Mike, nobody knows who these people are. <laughs> no, no, but I'm trying to piece it together from a standpoint of if it would be beneficial for the trade. I'm giving you young, cheap assets and spins at the wheel. Hey, you get the twenty first pick. And you have the number 12 pick. Maybe now you can move right. up to 10 or 9. Maybe now you sure. can get the Aaron Fox. And you get a young, controllable center coming over from Europe in Zizic. And you get the salary. Up, and, mo and perhaps most importantly, you get the salary. The, up the Celtics are one of the only teams in the league that are going to be able to play ball and not corrupt themselves because Danny Ainge just sat there like a coin collector. No, I think it'd be great. I actually think it is pretty well thought out. Of, thought out. And uh, that's exactly I why hope we it got happens. this response. <laughs> well, again, it's like you said, no one really knows know. who these guys are. I know. I'm just saying if there's a playoff result that could benefit the Pistons offseason, it would be my Celtics just literally launching themselves into space. What about if the, if the Pistons give Drummond and their first-round pick for the number one overall pick? No, st you're not getting No, stop it. You're not getting that pick. You're not? No. My answer is no. Just a thought. Just nope. a thought. No. Here's now, that a, would be a hot take. No, here's a thought. If the Celtics are giving up that number one pick, they have to get a superstar. Like you got to, you got to get a Paul. Andre Drummond was an All Star, correct? <laughs> uh, David can't even look at you. I can't look at you. Oh. Number one pick, I got to get a Paul George, who's going to LA. I'm just giving you an example. Number no, I was just throwing that out. Look, I, I said it earlier in the trade deadline, and you guys laughed at me. I would have traded the number one pick for Jimmy Butler because I think Jimmy Butler is one of the five best two way guys in the league. Not five best overall play. Look, LeBron James, better basketball player. But LeBron is the number one two-way guy in the league. We all agree on that? All Absolutely. Right. Paul George is a top five two-way guy. A little bit of a selfish guy, but he's a two-way player. Like, Jimmy Butler's a two-way guy. He'll be your best defender. He'll be your best or second best offensive player. Now, guys like that are tough to find. Steph Curry's not a two-way guy. Now, Steph Curry might be one of the ten best scorers in the league. Not a two-way player. I'll tell you who's becoming one of the five best two-way players. Oh, y you know who. Anta to quo unpo. Hey, Sully, remember the time Danny Ainge traded up to draft Kelly Olenek instead of Giannis Antetokounmpo, and he went to the next pick to the Bucks. I do remember that. <laughs> hey, at least James uh, no. Young. You see James Young got some minutes last night, too. That was another great first-round pick. I Local didn't, guy. Didn't even know he was alive. I didn't either. I didn't even think he was still on the team. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. All right, let's get some of the people in. Do the business. We'll get the mock draft mania to you. I wanted to sell you some hope if you're a Piston fan and give you an out. Celtics are going out in style, and that means this summer, it could be a nuclear summer in Boston. It might help you. They got all the pieces to take one of your problems. Sully, can I get a phone call in the mix? May I? Yeah, we can do that. Perfect. Thank you. Let's go to MC971. What's up, MC? Hey, not too much. How's she going, eh? So I got a hot take for you guys. So on the Jimenez, I don't want to bring the audience down. I hate to do it, but my thinking, the one guy said that one guy was really rich, killed himself. One guy was really poor, killed himself. So the problem, I think, is control, guns, and the drugs mind over matter so like some people have a better mindset to overcome those things than some people can't but in the root of all evil money is the root of all evil so people do things that they don't want to do just to get that money so whether you're rich or poor i think it's control the, go the government is controlling everything so they're dictating what we are doing in a in a pit <laughs> I don't know where that was going. I just didn't want to ride in the car any longer. MC, wow. 248 539 